that isn't Latin America was Empire. The only team. <laughs> it's the year to bring those Brazilian flags and wave them in the air. But Rogue, are they one potential flaw in the entire lock-off that they have minus Empire? Yeah, just Rogue has the opportunity now to stop that statistic. Uh, that statistic. Take there it again. It's uh, there, there we go. Stop <laughs> that statistic from coming through. But they do need to find this map. They do need to find Clubhouse now. Demokia. They twice got just a singular man away from putting themselves into these grand finals. But unfortunately, they failed. And that means that if you won that international finals, you got to be cheering for Rogue right now. Bands are coming through in the meantime. Flores and Thatcher have been banned on the attack. Amira now has been removed. Seem to be too problematic potentially on coastline. Of course, a different map right now. Mira could be even more so problematic on the side um, of Clubhouse, especially in the hands of Leo Gitz when it will be in the bathroom aimed towards a jacuzzi yes. wall. We've seen so many great kills coming from that direction, even though they banned themselves. Kate logic of the Thatcher is gone, and that means that now we are getting in the way. Get the formalities out of the way, and uh, with that, the action will soon start yet once again. One of the things we've got to take about this is the statement that Rogue has made to get to this point. Because before then, the only statements about them really were scribbled hand notes written down of, well, they survived. Congrats. Great. I mean, it is great. We've seen yeah. them play at their worst. It's called the second stage of a three-stage season. But to keep themselves in this major and to take themselves to SI, they beat the major champions, the reigning champions of Team 1. That is a huge statement. Imagine the size of the statement if in the build-up to SI, they also take out the reigning SI champions. That is the weight of this game at this moment. And to be fair, and I've been need to make one of their own. Hey, Mexico, that wasn't entirely to plan, but we are still a contender. We are still a top dog, and we're still going to put this pressure down. And the people definitely want to put this pressure down. However, the most amount of pressure is currently on Rogue. If you can speak of pressure, that is, because you just mentioned it. They went from fighting to stay out of relegations to doing that successfully, to making it to the major, to make it out of groups, to go to semis. Ten seconds to go. And it has been a good run so far already Five and they're just trying left. to make it a small bit better but they're up against the world champions and nip is a true tournament team as soon as they do start to get into that tournament there is little that can stop them from then on forward and rogue is just that first hurdle that they now need to go over because if they do so tomorrow that grand finals that's what they're aiming for they want to get yet another title under their names but as i mentioned rogue they need to go through them first and they're already halfway done. They just need to get one more map on their name. Now, obviously, Clubhouse or not. As NIP's map, Clubhouse, there was the choice of where they wanted to go, and Rogue opted to start on their attack. And as many people have said many times, it is their preferred stance. And if they can put a lot of distance in, if they can really start to drive home some of the coordination and communication that's got them to cause so much devastation in this tournament so far, that could really help reinvigorate their morale. Coming into a split half on Coastline on their map, you could see that things weren't quite connected, especially when they got off to such a strong start. Here, a strong start could have a massive impact and effect on how they're able to continue that momentum throughout the rest of this map. The collapse starts on Kitchen, and the pressure looks towards the below. That's a very step-by-step -step plan. It was mentioned before as well. You for this first uh, site, you just open up the hatches and maybe you go for dirt as there seems to be some pressure coming down from that side as well at this very same time. And then you go for a collapse. A bomb Where it really depends on what kind of a take you want to go for. For now, it seems like Rogue wants to get heavy on dirt here. Two members waiting to push on, but smoke canisters hold them back just slightly. And after that, it will be Kamikaze with a shotgun waiting for them around the corner as well. It is a power position, but one thing that you might not have seen is that all of the NIP players came back to join this fight. Three rotated around Oil to get in the confrontation, dropped down and hoping for the Those swing as two English shotguns prepped up to see if they can meet the English man on the floor around the corner. The charge and the push and the double just connects! Only just though, Leon with the last bullets in the mag makes a magnificent take.
we're talking of Musi, the consistent problem in that trade game for Rogue. Strikes once, and he's trying to toy with the idea of twice. The grenade bounces down, forces him around, but still a massive take on that flank. Yeah, big take indeed. Able to drop that diffuser just slightly as well. And that means that Aces is the one that is now dedicated to it. But another gunfight comes down. Another trade comes in as well. It's a two on two situation right now. And none of the rogue players are on site. The diffuser is still dropped. It seems like they're deciding to go for these kills. And when Leon gets that, he's playing around the border. He's going to be able to get up a free one. Muzi did not check the corner. And that brings it back to a one on one now as Leon does go down. 12 seconds and it is the last dash. You know he's around the third box the grenade on one side it hits you on the pop on the other julio is that lock and that is a first round for nip ah uh, that was gonna be painful there the explosion of that grenade really masked him coming through did a little bit of damage to himself but in the end was not able to spot out that last defender and nip they take the lead after they already have the first map going their way they now have the first round of the second in their hands as well and they continue. From the bottom floor, they go one up. The bar and the stage are going to be played. A Maestro was on the board, but will be six picked out. A Echo will make its entree. And we've often seen that super effective on that rear stage. Just hidden in many different angles, many different corners you can find. What a great double from Udio to end it off. So, off to bar stage. and. Off to a chance for Rogue to bring it together. They were able to get a really good lead in there, but the reactivity of NIP on that defense was so sharp. As I briefly mentioned, as soon as that kitchen hatch got open, three NIP players came down from oil, took the drop, and went back towards blue. They quickly worked out what was happening, softed it behind them, and made sure that they had their eyes in the right place. And it came true. Because they needed the positions for the trade, it ended in a one versus one. But if there was a less reactive force up against them, it could have very easily been Rogue swanning in and sweeping the site. Now, NIP, we have seen them before. We saw them together at the Six Invitational there as well. They slowly grew into that tournament with every best of three that passed. They grew stronger and stronger. As Judah well takes a small bit of damage, but still alive with an MX4 Storm in hand that does have that 1.5 now, so still as lethal as ever, especially if he's the one to swing. And Rogue, well, they will be holding off on the windows. They are prepared for potential jump outs, but the side is not that top floor. But the attackers, however, need it for the verticality, because otherwise there is just so many opportunities. But a beautiful spot there, by the way, using the Echo Drone to jump outside. <laughs> it's, it's like, pull, pull. It's clay pigeon shooting, but you don't expect it. And Julio expects a little it. bit of damage, and there it is. The Echo takes care of rips. And Kamikaze is continuing the trend that they had at the end of last map. Julio finally gets dropped, at least, and the grenade should secure a player, but the cross comes round. There's one on the back stairs here. And they're trying to double up on stock. The drone is there, and Musi has been so good. Oh, no way! The ping was there, misses one, he misses gets a two! Second. Musi absolutely devastates them inside stock and stacks them into the consideration of the shelves around. A seizes three more to try and find a fight through, and the Echo Drone has busied its way over. It knows that it has the eye and the angle, and he knows he's got to go upstairs to fight him. Some noise will be made right now. Psycho should be aware of the fact that Aces is coming through the door, and as he is about to swing, the Brox alarm goes off, and Psycho gets that final kill. A very clean round here from NIP, and I would like to break it down for you, but Musi just winning the gunfights, even if he's being pinged out. There's not much I can say about that. What I can say, however, is that Echo Drone just jumping up, getting the information with the ping as well, just for the Echo to swing himself and pick up those kills. Is a small little detail that, of course, helps towards that victory. And I have no clue that happened because none of them have seen it. They have it. Just that's in the back of that, just that single jump up. His own intel. His own intel. Popped up on the drone and took the fight. This with the yellow ping and then one for one. Musi has been terrifying today. And it's not just that he keeps getting involved in engagements, but look at when he does and look at how he does. It's so rare 
for Rogue to take a fight and get into it without almost instantly having a response from him. The amount of times that he has not been there to at least find a fight with somebody else or the person who's just done a killing yeah. is probably about two or three across both maps so far. It is so sharp for that trade. That trade game is key in Rainbow. You need to make sure that you continue, or at least keeping balance in those numbers, or at least take control. And then appear to have done that well so far, especially that last round. But again, I would like to break it down for you, but Muzi, who gets yellow pings on him, just wins the gunfights because he's just better. It's, at that moment, it's like, what can you do? You swing, you pre-fire, and he somehow still gets the kill on you. It's frustrating, to say the least. Two rounds have slipped past Rogue so far. The first was tight, and the second was not. It was great play from NIP, and now it's down to Rogue to see if they can reapply themselves into this top floor take. As they separate, and this is, if we're going to talk phases and steps in this take, it is the first try and limit the lockdown of construction that might otherwise be there. So if you put pressure onto CCTV or elsewhere, that rotation is not impossible, but suddenly very, very dangerous. And there it is. The pressure from CC is starting to come through. You can see the drones are putting their placement up as Jacuzzi gets popped open as well. That Gemini has gone deep. And Prano is getting a huge swathe of information off the back of Leon here as they send another drone through. And the jacuzzi wall has been opened up super early here and two members of Rogue right now getting drones as Leon wants to go for the entry. There's only two members directly on that side. Rogue can definitely try and outrun this or overrun this, so to say. And now they're just waiting for that piece of information. They need to find out where Psycho is. The completely reinforced bathroom is a problem. They are starting to try and deal with that now with Excaros. However, his shield is still in place. They either need to go through the hallway or they need to go inside of the gym. And with Cryon opening up on the gym window, they would think that the pressure becomes more on the nip side, but Psycho digs in deep right next to it. They might not be aware of it. That's it, behind the gym equipment. Oh, they surely are, but the grenade doesn't quite get the connection. He's able to slip away and Psycho finds himself a new semblance of safety as Rogue is still knocking on the door of, can we get through? Julio is buried on a corner and canisters off the drop onto Logistics Hatch and the Goyo shield pops from the range. It now forces Psycho into a trickier position of swing and a miss, potentially. He doesn't have that safety that was offered by it before. Pino is able to slip back through. They're still trying to find their way to rebuff any of the approach here on Jacuzzi, but the time is ticking away from Rogue, and they're still concerned. They're not entirely sure if NIP is going for the roam and the rotation, and at this point, all that precious intel they got super early is now a little bit spicy and pointless. Prano, talking of, suffers at the first, but it finally falls. It's Pino on the drop, and Ace is inside with rips with one more. Leon locks it off, and suddenly it's a massive affray all across the top floor. Julio has everything to do, and he starts by getting the first, but it's an ace clutch situation. The diffuser is just about to be planted. Locked off, and a great take on rips from the sliver and the slice that was offered, but Pirano cuts back, and an IP cut there first. Rogue starts to fight back. They have their first attacking round. They managed to get it in round number three, but they need to find more. They cannot just be happy with a single one. Preferably two, preferably even three, to really put up a fight for the second half. But so far, NIP have been relatively untouchable. If it wasn't for the flashbang inside of dirt, they would have been picked up. So small details, even though they would have been aware, actually, because as soon as Leon Gibbs was actually prone there, you saw two laser pointers on the wall next to him. He might not have recognized it. It's just such a small detail that you don't always uh, well, see if you're that laser focused on your crosshairs. And as it gets the first, he was surprised there was a second one suddenly shooting back. Well, that's it at this point. I know you said they need the three, but I think if NIP get that third, well, that makes the second half very tricky for Rogue. On a map where they need to have a good lead in on the half, where they know that it's their better. You try and angle that one towards the camera and make sure that's what people remember. And here now, we head back down underneath. I'm curious to see what changes might come through from NIP. As I said, their reaction was what won them that round. And it's just seeing if they feel they have to bring something else here in terms of a hold and a bit of structure, or if they're saying, nope, one versus one, part of the course, great reaction, keep at it. 
That is the big question indeed. Psycho with those Valkyrie cameras, where will they be deployed or rather where will the last be deployed as the rest already has been tossed out. A bit of pressure comes down. The Sasa quickly throw it up, but not outside. But IQ is on the board, and Leon gets quickly dispatches the Black Eye that just has been tossed out. Bomb located by attack. Of course, feeds some information to NIB. They have already taken care of the cam, so the information is there. They just don't know if it was a pre placed drone or an IQ really taking care of those pieces of information. As well, the cams are mute. Jammers are being pinged with the IQ scanner. Of course, the rework that we've seen. It's going to be the rest of the team that is well aware of their positions as well. Ryan is dangerously eyeing up that, and the C4 is going to swing. Oh, and might get him. Hit. Ryan is dropped. They will be able to get him back up, though, and obviously there is no way to capitalize on that kill, but still so close to such a devastating opener. Might be afraid there will be a second as the Xcarus are being taken care of still from above. Pino playing inside of the logistics knows that he's about to be receiving some extra pressure as well because the hatch will now be under control of two rogue players with grenades as well. How do you, why do you keep on shooting these Xcarus? I'm not quite sure. But honestly, said, yeah, just go ahead. Just shoot it, do it. Okay, I he decides to hold back now. <laughs> I would hope so. Oh I mean, no, no, yeah. there they come. Yeah, just two more. All right, definitely not going to be another two and that will be shot six, out. Six X Kairos to the same hatch, and they're trying to set up the fight, and finally they put some pressure down, but Pino gets crying, and that's the drop on the hatch. He is doing so much work, and he's now going to see if he can apply pressure elsewhere, and what a dismantling of Rogue's approach here. Leon goes for the drop. Psycho, they can probably get him back up, but they really have a lot left to do, and there's only a minute left to do it. Of course, the idea was to use the Xkaros to bait them to shoot it out, allowing the hatch player to pick up the kill, but the disconnect was too big, and well, as the hatch does open up, it's Leon that tries to sneak inside of Blue, sneak next to the boiler, but the Benchy will give away that game. He pings it out, but there's nothing he can really do. He needs some support of his teammates here, but it's Sprano that picks up yet another. It's a three on four actively now, with Psycho still slowly bleeding out. The smoke and this deal quite a bit of damage here. But Julio has no clue that Leon gets us right next to him. Great and important take there by ACs as they're going to see if they can re-rotate and try to pop onto the default plant. But there they are, and the shotgun works pretty good at that range with Julio doing pretty good range of his own. Ten seconds pretty much, and we're about to start to get the clear here on Armory. A great take, and Prano is going to see if he can stick it another down, but not out. But here is the drop on the box, sees the sliver, and takes it a handful of seconds, and Julio clutches it out. Really doubled down on the exit there. Needed to go towards the motorcycle to not allow a gunfight to come up. And with that, he wins that round. And with that, he puts them up three to one. And you just said it. The second half will be a lot more difficult now for the side of Rogue. Drone is ready. And they still need to find more rounds. I mean, all I can say to the analysts is just watch that round if you want to know why Rogue is struggling. It was just so many questions. There was six X Kairos pellets dropped I think over. even more in the end. Potentially, because they just kept on firing them to the hatch and they were like, we'll have the cover above. They'll be there at some point. Let's just fire another two X Kairos. And it's such a struggle to watch because we know Rogue can be sharper than this. I think when the hatch opened up, there was only two left in pocket at that very moment for Aces. And and I said it, they wanted to use it as a bit of a bait. And of course, they, they put up the extra set of Xcarls and finally they were going to take the gunfight. However, Pino just, just decimated crying on top of the hatch, just took the headshot right away. Didn't even bother taking out those Xcarls anymore. He knew his job was done there and decided to fall off. And it puts NIP on a 3-1 scoreline now. Back to bar stage, we go. Again, we do see the Yokai drone on the side of Kamikaze. The question is, will it be jumping out on the hatches yet once again as Psycho is preparing a jump out of his own? Oh, no one's there. All right, that's going to be uh, quite an eventful <laughs> jump out. That was like the best awkward framing. Yeah. This is going to be big. Oh, no. There's no one there. So. We just uh, dispatched that quickly, and his ace is here again on the repel. 
was swung quickly the last time around. This time goes up onto the roof. Wants a bit more safety as Leon Gids is playing with that IQ, trying to figure it out, and then spots the Yokai drone jumping up. And surely Kamikaze is well aware of it now that the uh, Yokai has been spotted. But the Oryx is right here inside a strip to provide some support. The Yokai will be defended with a man's life. Well, this is a bit of a response from Rogue, and it couldn't come at a more important part of this conundrum. The pressure's gonna be broken here across the top as Crying goes for the drop and opens himself up a bit of a rotation. Leon's dug in on Strip. They've been able to force some of the ground away, and rightfully so, NIP's pulled some of the pressure away. The Echo Drones are back under their control elsewhere. They're making sure that they're not handing everything over. It's a good learn. Three men inside the Strip Club right now, Leon, will be uh, right there to get a bit Prana who opens up that wall. That means that the entrance towards the pool table will be there. However, you can no longer plan there. They need to go further than that. And that is where the verticality comes into play as Asus picks up the very first. Psycho will drop. That is going to be your Valkyrie off the board. But the Okai still posing a threat right here. The IQ is trying to get a hold of them, but Leung is just not allowed to grab these angles onto the Yoka drones, which just keep moving about. and really make sure that they stay alive for as long as they possibly can. Well, with that early take, once again, in their favor, it's just locking it down. There seems to be that problem. Leon with one more. He's able to keep digging himself into the firefights here, and as a driving force, he's been a big one, but there it is. Musi is taken aback. Dropped aces, lose the Habana, but importantly, they were there to catch him this time. How many times have we seen him strike and get away with it? Not this time, says Kryon. Leon gets on the other side of the wall here on Ulios. Just a simple spot of the drone could be enough to go for a wall bang and lock that one off. He is active. He is looking towards that main door, but the drone is shortly coming in as well. Does not want to jump up on the main stage. Gives away too much information and, you know, makes him a bit immobile here. So it's going to be Rips that goes to the peak as Leon gets spots out of player. Is slowly chasing on the ping as Yulia will be able to pick up the very first. It's Fino that will find one as well. A two on one, a one on two. It is going to be Yulio in a 1v2 situation. Ten seconds are left on the clock. The diffuser needs to be planted by Prana and he will try and make an attempt here. But Yulio is well aware of it as well. Gets the red ping, gets that first kill. The swing around on the other side of it as he digs himself in deep. Grind needs to swing the corner but the timer runs out yet once more NIP win yet another round and they're smiling about it I don't even think they know how they're able to keep connecting these dots but they are and it just keeps building it for to their defense here on club there's just a small disconnect between the pushes of Rogue. We've seen it during Coastline when they had the advantage, but were not able to close it out as they went on disconnected timings. And the same goes for here. They have that advantage. They started off strong and they allow NIP to bring it back. It was a five on three situation before kills started to rain back in. But after that, it was just trades, truly. And then Yulio being able to pick up that triple kill truly allowing them to pick up that round and suddenly it's four to one rogue is looking to salvage whatever is left for this first half of this second map because they are the ones who could be eliminated after this one they are the ones who's truly under pressure right now even though they say themselves the goal wasn't to make the major the goal was to stay inside of eul and everything after that was a bonus. They made it to the major. They made it to the playoffs. They made it to the sixth invitation on the semis in Sweden. But right now, the grand finals are under pressure and NIP is starting to run away with it. Yesterday was a day of two O's and today started as if it would have a bit of a difference, but if this keeps up. We might be back on that path of the course and we might have yet another all Latam final on our hands. Attack timeout, a conversation, and an attempt to claw at least one more attack. Their last came a couple of rounds into the engagement. Can they spend a couple of rounds to connect one more? It was here. It was on CCTV, and they've come close. But the biggest flaw at the minute for Rogue is themselves. Yeah. Out of the whole tournament, this is the first time We've seen them, I would say, playing inside their own head. 
I've seen it. I've not seen him this disconnected uh, in a long, long while. I know we've we've had it before uh, during stage two where everything just kind of seemed off. I'm not saying it's as bad as it was there, but they're not really able to lock off these advantages, for example, that they get time and time again. NIP is allowed to clutch it. And time and time again, they're allowed to bring it back and run away with the advantage in the round. And now NRP looking to pick up their fifth to truly make sure that this first half is locked in their favor. It is Rogue that needs to find a response with Leon taking just a small bit of damage here. Just tried to blitz past the doorway and hope nobody was watching, but how many times have we seen someone punished on that doorway? Yuzi was aware and almost was rewarded with a very cheeky kill, but Leon's able to slip on by. They're setting themselves up their flank watch drone, and now they know that there's a presence inside that bar, but at this point, the bar presence just has to slip away, and they have done. I believe they've headed down the stairs. They've set themselves up in a slightly different angle in the corner towards the kitchen, and they're just going to pull themselves with some distance. Two minutes. There's no rush. There's no rush for sure on the side of Rogue, but they do need to make sure that their steps are being met. They wanted to open up onto the garage, but New Jammer seemed to be stopping that from truly happening. And as the rest of them are starting to jump in right below the plateau, going through Adam, hoping to push up onto the main stairs, potentially even. Not quite sure what they're doing. They jumped in with three, now only one is left, and they're all going back outside. It seems like a rotation has been called. That's it. Now as they're trying to detect all the parts inside, they're going to see if they can get this wall opened. The grenade rolls through, and Aces should be able to pop off those Havana pellets. The spray goes just above the knees of the lying down body, and Musi is going to say, well, I'm still in here. you got to come get me. There's almost Psycho punished even further, charges away to get a bit of the width towards the potential opening here from underneath. And they'll probably have an awareness now that there's two bodies, but how are they going to try and answer this problem? Flashbangs are being popped in here, and the same uh, for the new well, my disc, because actually Leon will be able to pick up the very first, a long angle. This is hoping to find more Psycho still on the mezzanines. However, it's going to be able to punish one of the players. Goes for two, we'll find that as well. Psycho just locks up the garage here. And Rogue again are our men down as they desperately need to find a second on those mezzanines. So what do they do? Let's just send more men that way. Erips is going to be the next potential fight and the pings are there, but they were there before and Psycho was flashed and still didn't care. Pino and Psycho for one apiece finally stopped his reign of terror on the rafters, but it is a 5-1 half for NIP. Oh, this is getting out of hand real quickly here for Rogue. They need to start bouncing back and they need to start bouncing back now because the pressure is rising. Rising ever more than before. They have the opportunity here to make it to the Grand Finals, but they need to first bring back this map into a win for themselves because a singular round more for NIP. And suddenly we find ourselves in a couple of map and match and series points. And Church Arsenal, well, that will be the first time Rogue will decide to go to. You do not see it yet, but we will give you that spoiler. And with defending that bottom floor, they need to start off strong. They need to start off with a win. They need to break the momentum that NIP is currently building. As otherwise, this could be a done-for semi-final. It is all in Rogue's hands. I'm not even going to go so as far to say that NIP are running away with this on their own terms. It is Rogue, their own short fallings that we're seeing come together. I said, leading into this from what we saw on Coast, they need to have a good opening half. Not just because it's the attack half on Club, which is their better half, yeah. but because they needed that moral boost. They needed that emotional swing of we can lock this in. And as they said, they've already impressed this tournament and they've played it without that modicum of pressure that blankets so heavily over so many teams. But a so-so performance is currently causing sorry results. To the last hope of Europe, right now as well, Rogue. And in the semi-finals, we're able to get here. BDS was not, Empire was not, and Vitality wasn't either. 
And Psycho here taking the first gunfight will be dealing small amounts of damage to Aces, but it's enough for a bit of a scare here. It's enough to soften him up a little bit for the final executor, the final push to come through as Crying himself. He will take some damage as well. They're slowly being chipped away from fights that they're taking by themselves. Slow and steady. Leon's going for a bit of a Roman rotation to see if he can cause some pressure potentially elsewhere. Nobody's caught him as of yet. And if he goes undetected on this swing, he knows that Koran was in a fight, but how deep you gotta go. That's the risk, that's the realization, and that is a spot. The yellow pings come through. This is gonna potentially be a pre-fire. Leon moves away though. He had that sixth cent that something was wrong, and he's just done a pretty big play. Bought some attention and some time, which, to be fair, they need as much as possible right now. The rest of NMP still continuing gathering some of that information. They need to get some breaches through. Of course, they have opened up inside of the dirt tunnel yet as Leon gets above the kitchen here, hoping to hold off. A bit of pressure comes through. Grenades are being tossed in together with some of the gunfire coming in from below. Perhaps looking to go aggressive. Leon gets doing this exact same getting into the bar, wants to stop this push from happening as Rips drops at the fuser. It's a very good first start, at least, to try and bring it back. And with the amount of time that's currently left, NIP, they need to strike hard. Psycho's gonna see if he can recollect this and hope he doesn't get caught as we see aces get. Julio dropped on the fight and Leon's found his way towards the bar. He's keeping that six scanner on to make sure that if there are any drones, all they get is the buzz as Musi is gonna see if he can creep his way to lounge. The Jaeger heads off. Crying realizes he's got other places to be as the pressure starts to pop on dirt, but Leon pops off upstairs. A very important take, and now Psycho's under a bit of pressure. He knows it's coming, and Musi knows that he's got to start dealing with the side. A great nade. Doesn't quite get the connection that they want. But with the looming pressure and presence of Leon, they've got to start making a move, and here it comes, and there it goes. The double for Rips on the lockdown on the backside of Armory, and Musi's going to see if he can bury his way down oil. The first fight doesn't quite connect. The pre-fire hits, and with this spread and with where they are, it's a push from Dirt, and it's a take from Rogue. To bring it back just slightly here, the second round of this map. Slightly breaking the momentum that NIP have been building, but they're not quite there yet. They need more. They need to bring this to a 5-5 and an overtime, well, not an overtime, a match point for themselves. Because as soon as NIP reaches that sixth, that is when it's everything to play for. That is when elimination is on the line. We're not that far yet, but we are slowly creeping in. And you might be wondering, why did they go for the hatch drop? He knew two players were around that box. He had no clue. One was deep in armory. And as a result, just try to go for it. Sometimes you need to make it happen. Sometimes you need to go for a hero play to force your team through, especially if you've lost some players, some important players, trying to get towards the site. CCTV Cash will be up next. It is the site that was for a long time favored by many, but has fallen out of popularity due to a drop in the defensive win rate. And now will be used by Rogue and needs to be won by Rogue as well. I, I won't say they don't have a choice. They do have a choice. They, they <laughs> mean, can lose it. There is still that one round buffer. <laughs> the choice exists. But you it's saw not a very good one. I wouldn't take it. I, I wouldn't take the choice either. <laughs> if it was offered to me, I would say no, not today, not now, not yet, at least. Now, as we get a little bit more of a development here, they get their second round, and it is more than important, but every single one is. They've used their attack timeout, and all they've got now is just what they can pull together inside the game itself on their defense. I know we've talked about how they're generally an attacker team. It still is potential on their defense, but they've got to get past themselves, as we said and saw. Not quite hitting the mark on what you're best at is always going to be a big fight. This wall gets blown. The default takes, starts with the default Fuhrer. And to be fair, we saw that further from the opponents. But a single player locked off a triple kill in the top of rafters. What a jump out here from Leon. He's pulled away, Leon. Finds one, finds some energy, and finds Pino. And this is exactly what Rogue needs to do. We mentioned it before, we were talking about it. The unpredictability of Rogue, the aggression is what could pick NIP apart, but for so far, haven't really been able to bring that yet. And now with a jump out from Leon Gitz, it's exactly what we want to see. Moves in a very long gunfight from two different angles. 
It's going to be picked up. Or pick up uh, Leon gets Vader, who came all the way from the basement. Wasn't on your screen, but started on the top, uh, top overview. <laughs> And it brings it back just slightly, but a second player, Aces, is close around the corner and he's being pinged out as well. Yeah, that's the danger right now is we can hear those grenades being charged. We can see those red pings on the screen and we can see Aces get the heck out of there. But that wall's open, that's dangerous and rips. He takes the next fight on the stair set itself. More pings, more lounge, more fight, more pressure, more bloodshed. As Psycho swings onto the corner and look at this. So many NIP bodies realized they had to lock down that control on the lounge. So, so many of them reimagined themselves. The double take round from Stock and the push from the double door. Locked off bar, Aces. Well, he's got a friend potentially in Musi who's reloading, re-droning and about to be dropped for and rocked. And there it is. Can he get back in? No. Julio had the cover from deep. The wall gets popped, but it's a big take. Three versus two, 50 seconds. Brano, the next one to go aggressive here, tries to go for a bit of a run out here as well, he will be forced to fall back. Grind still on the mezzanines, has an opportunity to jump back in. The Psycho is trying to hold it off. The need to lock off these angles, 40 seconds and counting. Smoke canisters are being used to stall some time as NIP is getting into a position. I think they might be jumping in from two or three different angles at the very same time and try and lock off the cover as Cry needs to rotate back. At some point, the window gets opened up to give him something else to work worry about and this kamikaze is about to swing on him here they have no clue he's prone in there that's a diffuser dropped it's another kill to come through psycho in a 1v2 now with 15 seconds to go massive plays massive smoke canister and a massive claw back from the two remaining rogue players a connection but a blind hopeful run through what was a very toxic space Rogue find another round, their third of the game, their second in a row, and that is the first time they've been able to thread more than one since the opening three they had in map one. Trying to bring it back. Started off with the jump out of Leon. Who then went on a bit of a chase here for Muzi, who was uh, under heavy pressure, but Muzi just a little bit too quick there. And in the end, Three people just trying to face towards that second player on the bar, but the runouts were too quick, too strong. I want to pick up some of the kills, and of course, the diffuser being dropped there did not help at all. A bit of a disconnect this time in the side of NIP. They wanted to go for a synchronized push, but a bit of lack of information, not knowing that Crying jumped through the window and was prone underneath it. Managed to eventually lose them that round. And we head to the next. We head to the next side where NIP is still looking to find their six to put on the pressure to Rogue even more. But as Rogue starts to fight back, they will start to believe more and more as well. And they have just witnessed that their aggression seems to be quite effective. Just running out of those breaches, getting those kills if you know where they are. And Leon on that Valkyrie, he plays a big role in that. Those cams are so important. And we do not see the RQ that, you know, Rogue themselves brought on their attack being used by NIP. And that means that those chems are allowed to just have some free reign here. The Ying on the board. We're about to see potentially something a little bit different from NIP. We haven't seen her in this showdown. We haven't seen her cause really any effect and hasn't had the biggest presence as she has once or twice. But there's always that sort of looming danger. There's the chance of being able to burn through a huge swathe of utility and potentially get some of these grenades to pop off that have otherwise not quite connected the same way they did in other maps. And maybe those explosives or maybe the explosive lead-in potential of those candelas can give them some blinding place. Jacuzzi gets open and they have some pressure above logistics as well. I think they're a bit cautious of dirt and I think that's what Psycho is keeping the lock on. Yep. Making sure that they don't suddenly suffer from a swing from probably a certain Leon Kids. They have been receiving some of that aggression on the side of Rogue. They don't want to have more of that here. The Leon gets, he's not currently below. He's playing on the place where he previously had a mirror window and he now takes some damage. Wants to play the same game, wants to swing on them, wants to pick up these kills, but Rogue keeps on getting that little bit of chip damage. And as the Excaris are about to be shut out by Pino, that wall bathroom no longer will be able to be played as effectively as it could otherwise be with a shotgun on the close corner. But they're just waiting for now, they're just waiting. They're trying to get everybody in a position where they could go for a plant, where they could go for a push. 
They first want to find these roamers as well. Liam gets still allowed to run free. Goes towards the dirt tunnel right now in the meantime. Wonder if they're still keeping an eye on it, if logistics is the next point of interest here for NIP. Oh, that was a bit of a mistake there. A bit of a miss throw on the Candelas, and Leon's able to punish there. Drops Pino. Musi's found his way into the top of the stairs, but he's a little bit concerned. Where is everybody? He's thinking, well, there they are, Psycho says, as he finds a fight and a trade-off with Kryon. There is one more for Julio, able to put a bit of a lock here, and suddenly they've been able to find some momentum. It is a three versus one out of nowhere. And we said Leon was the strike that might be the one that hits the mark. It's Julio that marks just one thing on the walls. A map point, a 2-0, and maybe the sixth Latin America finalist. Will NIP make us bow down yet once again for a Brazilian overlord, as we will find out tomorrow. If they do, Rizro going to try and make it, make it come back here. Bring it to an overtime. Take it in that overtime and bring it to a map number three. George Arsenal, the next site. It has been unlocked. It will be played yet once again. And NIP, they were able to put up some pressure, but a man inside of Arsenal deep dug inside. As you see the kill there, Leon Gitzi made it over to dirt. He said that would happen. <laughs> yeah, and then I called it as well when it was going down as I saw him just quickly run. And he managed to pick up that kill, but he was the last one remaining after that because NIP, when a kill came through, decided to just punch up onto the site and completely take over. And out of pressure is on Rogue. Three match and serious points for NIP. Three opportunities on their attack to lock it off. And where it was a tertiary site that they managed to win this time around, they could just as well do it right now on the basement. If they get a grasp of Rogue, however, they need to find that Roamer. They need to find the Roamers if they have been so effective. Just playing in that bar, playing from above, able to pick up two very important kills, leaving NIP with less utility, truly, that they would have needed to go for the execute they wanted to go for. Leon the Roam up around the top as well, but actually takes a quick drop here. The cam goes towards the top of blue, and Aces is doing a bit of distance. Thinking about open the hatch, but instead just proxies it for now to get the drop on anyone that might find a place through. NIP, they have all they need really for a solid clear here. They've got the Jackal as well. They're adapting their operator selection to what's being put in front of them. And that's one of those things that we say is often so strong about their game. Is I pointed out before it was the change on coastline in terms of how they attacked Rogue that really shifted what was an 0-3 into a 3-3. And here, they've decided to start stepping it up again, and that's the danger. The drop comes through, as does the ping, and Leon puts the pressure onto the Jackal. Psycho almost taken out by that pre-place prox, but now the pressure's coming back round. It's a great take on a window. The catch against Leon, the player that keeps fighting back. Rips and Musi find one apiece, but it's Rips that runs away as the survivor, and they slink their way back to the site. Not a single player of Rogue was on the site for a long time. Only Prano quite close, the rest was outside, was on that roam. And NIP, well, they managed to pick up one, but have taken some losses in a result. Musi picked up, Psycho down to one HP. Well, about 10, but just a single bullet, of course, in the end there. And with 90 seconds left on the clock, NIP will take their time. They will get their information, know for sure that the bars will be safe as the hatches do get opened up. Always the fear, of course, for the Nitros. Try and place them with a bit of safety, but they're not on the board this time. They're not going to be here. They could just trade on attack, but they need to take these gunfights. They need to win the gunfights this time. That is the important part, because that's where it fell apart during the last time NIP attacked here. That was it, and we saw a bit of the loose play that came in and punished them, and that was why NIP say, paid so much attention to that. The Jackal's still on the board as well. They can still cause some of the destruction, the triple hard destruction too. They lost one of their pieces very early on last time, and again, it is that learning game from NIP, that adapting game, and that reimagining of how can we beat what is in front of us. Aces dances between the two cabinets and make sure he doesn't get caught by a quick swing from the Legion that just slows that approach. And as the canister pops on the hatch and the grenade rolls its way to the back, it doesn't quite get the connection that they wanted, but 20 seconds. And we're about to start to see an NIP explosion. The bodies pull back. 
You've got a charge from Moto as the fight comes through and Rips goes down. He wasn't on much, but they are not on much time. They're about to see if they can get the fight on pipes. Can't connect to Julia, Pino, Psycho, and Pino no, like for this. one more NIP. They flood, they strike, they slap, and they maneuver themselves into the final. And if I came into this saying Rogue had made a huge statement by beating the major champions and almost taking the SI ones too. 